by this time last year, that's around um, July 2023, it cost around um, 2,400 Naira to raise a broiler. But just a year difference, July 2024, it costs more than 5,000 Naira to raise a broiler because of the constant increase in the cost of production. The materials used in raising broilers every time, every day, every week or twice in a week, cost of materials skyrockets due to the inflation or insecurity, poor government policies and other things that the media is propagating for all of us to believe. This has left many farmers with the question of how can they, how can we, I must say farmer, how can we reduce the cost of production and maximize profit? So if this is um, the question that has been ringing in your mind, in this video I'm going to share with you and suggest ways that you can be able to slash cost of production and still maintain quality, maintain productivity and also maximize your profit. If you are excited about what I'm about to share with you, kindly subscribe to this channel if you are just seeing our video for the first time. And um, by the before the end of the video, if you like what you see, make sure you leave a like. And if you have question by the end of this video, leave your question in the comment section and someone will attend to you. Now, this video will not be complete if we don't start from by mentioning some of the things that you must certainly be spending your money on. They are considered materials for production. And number one, which is the most important of them all, is feed. Feed is going to be taking up about 75 to 80% cost of the production. So we really need to deal with this feed. Number two is the day o chicks. Day o chicks. Number three, then we we'll start considering the ones that um, are kind of less expensive. People see them not to be important, but they are really important. Ones like um, transportation, transportation. We talk about labor. These are the workers in the farm. We talk of um, brooding materials, brooding materials. We talk about um, medications and um, miscellaneous. Yeah, miscellaneous. In this miscellaneous, we also talk about um, PR. That's tipping. Finally the duration of raising the best first one in the list is the feed now feed accounts for 75 to 80 percent cost of raising the broilers let me tell you a little story and this story is around the number one solution to feed which is bulk poaches bulk poaches I raised um, about 800, about 800 broilers from the 4th of um, June, and I raised them for six weeks. I normally in the farm, we normally we know how many bags, since we know how many broilers we want to raise, we also know how many bags of feed they are going to be consuming. We normally raise our best here for six weeks. So when we calculate that, what we normally do is uh, we buy all the bags at once, and this has been saving us a lot of money. Because at the end of the day, when we are about to sell the best, we check the current price of the feed, we add it as inflation price, and then we give the price we are selling our broilers, and we make more profit. Although you consider the inflation price. So, back to the story I was telling you. I bought feed for these 800 broilers. Top feed. I bought the feed they will be eating. The top feed cost me 16,200 naira at the time of purchase. So I bought everything and put them in the store before the end of that week the feed price increased to 17.5 remember i've already gotten everything that i need so i didn't spend this extra money to buy feed then later on around the third week or so the feed increased to 19,000 naira and then later before we finished raising that particular batch of brothers the feed was sold for 22,000 naira Top feed, top feed. This same feed that I regularly use. So, um, how much did we save? Assuming we, we are the kind of farmers who normally buy the feed week by week that the broilers will consume. That means we'll start by buying this feed at this price. And then later, we'll buy at this price. Later, we'll buy at this price. And later, we'll buy at this price. But 
due to we did a bulk purchase we bought everything at this price when all these increments we are going on we didn't spend extra money on feed and how much did we escape from we escaped from spending let me just tell you the analysis for one bag we bought the feed at 16,200 16,200 naira and before we finish raising the best the feed was at 22,000 naira so if we say 22,000 naira we escaped extra 5 paying extra 5,800 naira yes this may not really be the actual because when it was at this price we escaped paying this price and we also escape paying this price so that's where bulk purchase will save you just make sure that um, you have a good storage facility you have a good store that is not um that is airy and also there is no leakage when it rains then you calculate how many bags of feed your broilers are going to be consuming after calculating it you buy everything at once there is no need anticipating to buy later to buy later the more you are waiting to buy later feed price will be going up and if you don't know how much how to calculate the um, number of bags of feed that your broiler should be consuming, I will share a video in the description of this video. I will share a link in the description of this video for you to click and then learn how to calculate that yourself. Another way you will be saving money from this feed is by um, number two, you prevent feed wastage. Wastage starts during the brooding period. It starts from, in fact, after the third day, wastage have started. You know, when you bring in the chicks and you start raising them, um, you start with the three feeders. Don't raise your bears on three feeders past the third day. At worst, from the early morning of the fourth day, change the three feeders and introduce feeders like cone feeders that will enable you save feed. And as the best advance in age, start suspending the feeders above. Start raising them up gradually to the back or shoulder level of the best so that they will avoid feed wastage. When they start wasting feed, especially from the fourth day, and they are still on the tray feeder, you know, the best normally scratch. Like they have this kind of scavenging kind of lifestyle and it's in their nature. They will definitely do that. When they are doing it on the feed, some of the feed particles fall on the floor. And when they fall on the floor, they may not eat them again. And when they don't eat them, it has turned to wastage. You don't want, you want to spend, you want to make sure that you maximize every single drop of material you give to these best to make profit. You don't need to waste any for any reason. Then number, th the third way of um, cutting costs in the feed sector is um, the type of feed type of feed yeah some of us um when we bring in broilers we want them to start well so we give them a certain kind of feed for instance i don't want to mention name but since i've already mentioned top feed let me say feed like new hope feed it's expensive yes currently new hope feed is sold for twenty five thousand naira in my area you understand but we just use the feed to give to the best for just two weeks that's 14 days and then from the 10th day we start mixing the feed with maybe feed like top feed we can be mixing it with feed like um, biotin biotin or other feeds like chicken and all that from the 10th day we we'll start mixing the feed so it will be a gradual process you miss like say 25% of the new feed you are trying to introduce them to with the old one they've been consuming maybe on the second day you miss it 50 50 on the third day you mix it 75% of the new feed and then the old feed 25% then probably by the fourth day that's like the 14th day you totally switch to the new feed in this way you'll be able to save money yes new hope feed is quite expensive but it has quality and it can give you kind of what you need as a broiler farmer if you decide to use a cheaper feed to start your best it's still not bad but you have to consider the duration you want to raise the best so if you know you are targeting something like six weeks start well with a better feed so that before two weeks before the end of the second week your best have properly kick-started their growth very well before you gradually 
switch into another feed that is good but not as you understand what i'm trying to say that's it for feeding next we'll talk about the day old chicks let me call it day old chicks now the price of day old chicks is not constant it varies at times they manipulate it you get the point but most times it's based on demand now there are certain heart rates that you need to avoid that give you day old chicks see the reason why you need to avoid them some of them give you bears that are not good and you start complaining of no uniformity some of these bears come sick and you start from day one to start treating them in the first week you're already treating new chicks for what reason not even your fault hatchery fault and um, the hatcheries you need to really avoid around these day witches because you need to get quality and then you start raising them are uh, hatcheries that are also raising broilers with you some hatcheries currently in nigeria are raising broilers they sell day old chicks to you they raise broilers with you and also they sell mature chicks as a rule of thumb these hatcheries are going to take the best chicks that they hatch for themselves and then they will sell the rest to you that's where you start complaining about this and you start complaining about this so Try as much as possible to avoid hatcheries that are also raising chicks with you. That will help you save a lot. Because if you get sick beds, you start from day one and start treating them. That's extra cost in the cost of production. The next we have to consider here is the transportation. Transport. And this transportation somehow, in fact, wholeheartedly agrees with this bulk purchase over here because when you buy everything in bulk buy all their medications buy all the brooding materials buy all the feed materials you end up transporting all of them to the farm once yeah you can maybe if you don't have a good storage facility for cold storage you may not get the vaccine to the farm but if you do have a good storage cold facility you can get the vaccine at once get all the vaccines that you give to the lasotas the two doses the gomboros the two doses and then the other medications anticoxidosis antibiotics um glucose multivitamin get all of them buy everything at once bring them to the farm so that you know that you've already cured everything that has to do with transportation you transport them once you pay for transport once and then transportation is done the next on the list here is um labor Most times you can't do this farm all by yourself. You need assistance. You may not really be in the farm. You are an absentee farmer, so you have people who are working for you. That's okay. But at this point in time, cost of production is high. If you have too much farm attendance, I'm sorry to say this, this is the time to reduce some of them. The ones that are not active, the ones that make the farm manager or make you complain a lot by reminding them actively to do their duty. This is the time to let them go. Reduce the workforce. Probably everybody will get more work. There may be no more plenty time to rest. And then maybe you kind of increase the pay of the ones that are left behind. Also, if you are raising broilers and they are less than 100, you have no business with employing anybody except your family members. Because the profit outcome may not be enough so if you are raising something like less than 100 broilers please by all means just call carpenter construct a little cage and be raising your broilers by yourself in peace unless you are not around that you can engage someone to do it for you and also this is the farming season some farms this period is a time that they tell they give all their farm attendants holiday for them to just travel go for the farming season travel go assist their family farm after the farming season they come back what you just have to do is you pay them for that month that they are living but you give them extra that extra you decide how much it will be it may be enough for their transportation going and then when it's time for them to come back you send them transport again to come back so that you will reduce the number of beds you are raising maybe say something like less than 100 so that you can do it by yourself or everyone in your family if your farm is within your house will assist in doing this because you have to pay yourself you understand so raising less than 100 beds may not really be 
profitable when you are paying someone. The next, we'll talk about the brooding materials. Materials for brooding, you already know them. This is the rainy season. The you will spend more money on in heating the base during the brooding period. But if there is no other place you can save money during brooding, please from the fourth day remove the the three feeders and introduce cone so that the chicks will not be wasting the feed on the floor. And then the next we'll talk about is the, um, the medication. You already know the medications you need. Get all of them at once. Let it be that yes, this one is not enough. So that maybe when it's not enough, when you leave, you get the balance and you bring it in that way. Getting everything will save you cost of production, it will save you cost of transportation and all that. And then miscellaneous expenses. We have like um doing proper PR. Most of us are good with tipping. We tip our farm attendants. Tipping helps encourage people to work better. At this point in time, things are hard. You explain to your farm attendants or more things hard though, they will understand. But if there is any way you can still assist them with palliatives or once in a while you tip them but not as regular as before, you reduce it. If I tip farm attendants, I come back and I put it in the farm record because that tipping alone is part of cost of production. And that place I normally tip is when I go to go and buy feed. And I can carry this feed by myself and put it in the vehicle that will transport it for me. So out there you still need to tip some guys that are over there to help you do the physical level and when you do that it encourages them for the next time that they will see you coming from a distance everybody will be willing to assist you when you do this over time this period that things are kind of somehow you want to save expense you pipe you just tell them one more not in the they will be working for you happily based on the past tippings you get the point then finally we we'll talk about the duration of raising your broilers if you are raising your best past six weeks, I'm sorry to tell you that um, it's no longer profitable. This best mature by five weeks, but try your best to raise them for extra one week, which is the for the second day, making it the sixth week. But if you are raising them up to seventh week, please, if you still have broilers that are seven weeks old in your farm, it should be because you have not finished selling them, but you've already started selling, but you've not finished. Let it not be that You've not even started selling at all. It's no longer profitable. Then finally, things that many people overlook in cost of production is the farm record. Record everything that happens in the farm. Anything that you don't record that has to, especially expenses, is considered stolen. One bag of feed finished, record it. When it finished, record the time. You spent money on, on any of these things, it's part of the expenses, put it down in the record. At the end of the day, you can go through your record and you see where you're spending more. Then you ask yourself, can I save more from here? If you can save more from there, by all means, do that. That's how and where I can only suggest for you right now to help you cut cost of production so that you make more profit in these trying times. Especially if you are a poultry farmer, broiler poultry farmer in Nigeria.